The Lord be with you. Thank you for joining me today, Tuesday, July 11th. We continue in 1 Samuel chapters 13 and 14. Right at the beginning of chapter 13, right in that first verse, you'll notice, notice in the ESV Lutheran Study Bible, the number of years is blank. Um, let me read the text here, what it says here. Verse, these verses establish the formula that introduces the reigns of later kings. The omission of these two numbers reminds us that fall, fallible scribes copied the text of the Bible, but their mistakes in copying have not compromised biblical doctrine. God allowed these small details to drop out. Because Saul had a son, Jonathan, old enough to be an officer in the army, he was probably past 40. As subsequent verses indicate, other details are also lacking in the account of Saul's reign. The omissions con con concede, coincide with God's judgment on Saul's lack of faith and good judgment. It is, it is as though God is shortening Saul's time as a commentary on his reign. So the years are blank there in that first verse. So let us begin hearing his word. Verses 1 through 7 entitled, Saul Fights the Philistines. Saul was dot 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 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned dot 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 and two years over Israel. Saul chose 3,000 men of Israel. 2,000 were with Saul in Michmash and the hill country of Bethel, and 1,000 were with, were with Jonathan in Gibeah of Benjamin. The rest of the people he sent home, every man to his tent. Jonathan defeated the garrison of the Philistines that was at Geba, and the Philistines heard of it. And Saul blew the trumpet throughout all the land, saying, Let the Hebrews hear, and all Israel heard it, said that Saul had defeated the garrison of the Philistines and also that Israel had become a stench to the Philistines. And the people were called out to join Saul at Gilgal. And the Philistines mustered to fight with Israel 30,000 chariots and 6,000 horsemen and troops like the sand on the seashore in multitude. They came up and encamped in Michmash to the east of Beth Avon. When the men of Israel saw that they were in trouble, for the people were hard pressed, the people hid themselves in caves and in holes and in rocks, and in tombs and in cisterns. And some Hebrews crossed the fords of the Jordan to the land of Gad and Gilead. Saul was still at Gilgal, and all the people followed him, trembling. So far the word. Encounters with the Philistines dominate Saul's reign. This is definitely a time that calls for trust in God. In a similar way, the question for us is not whether we will face troubles, but where we will place our trust in those times that we do face troubles. True refuge resides only in, only in the one true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Samuel, the God who fulfilled his promises by sending his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save the whole world. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your gracious daily guidance and protection. We ask that you continue to watch over us and those we love. You graciously give us all things through your Son. In his name we pray. Amen. We continue in verse 8, entitled, Saul's Unlawful Sacrifice. He waited seven days, the time appointed by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal. And the people were scattering from him. So Saul said, Bring the burnt offering here to me, and the peace offerings. And he offered the burnt offering. As soon as he had finished offering the burnt offering, behold, Samuel came. And Saul went out to meet him and greet him. Samuel said, What have you done? And Saul said, When I saw that the people were scattering from me, and that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines had mustered at Michmash, I said, Now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the favor of the Lord, so I forced myself and offered the burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God with which he commanded you. For then the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be prince over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. And Samuel arose and went up from Gilgal. The rest of the people went up after Saul to meet the army. 
they went up from Gilgal to Gibeah of Benjamin. And Saul numbered the people who were present with him, about 600 men. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, and the people who were present with them stayed in Gibeah of Benjamin. But the Philistines encamped in Michmash. And raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. One company turned towards Oparah, to the land of Shual. Another company turned towards Beth Haran, and another company turned toward the border that looks down on the valley of Zibium, toward the wilderness. Now there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Israel, for the Philistines said, Lest the Hebrews make themselves swords or spears. But every one of the Israelites went down to the Philistines to sharpen his plowshares, his mattocks, his axe, or his sickle. And the charge was two-thirds of a shekel for the plowshares and the mattocks, and a third of a shekel for sharpening the axes and for the goads. So on the day of the battle there was neither sword nor spear found in the hand of any of the people was Saul and Jonathan. But Saul and Jonathan his son had them. And the garrison of the Philistines went out to the pass of Michmash. So far the word of the Lord. Because of Saul's act of disobedience and lack of faith, he will lose his kingdom and God's help against the Philistines. Often we bring troubles into our lives by thinking that God is not acting quickly enough to remove or ease some difficult situation. Yet he acts in the fullness of time. As when God sent forth his son to forgive all of our sins, including our sins of faithless impatience. Let us pray. Almighty God, in your infinite wisdom, you use all things for our temporal and eternal good. Forgive us the many times that we do not wait on you, but turn to our own faultly human solutions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue now in chapter 14 of 1 Samuel, verses 1 through 23, entitled, Jonathan Defeats the Philistines. One day Jonathan, the son of Saul, came to the young man who carried his armor. Come, let us go over to the Philistines' garrison on the other side. But he did not tell his father. Saul was staying in the outskirts of Gibeah in the pomegranate cave at Migron. The people who were with him were about 600 men, including Ahijah, the son of Ehdub, Ichabod's brother, son of Phinehas, son of Eli, the priest of the Lord, and Shiloh, wearing an ephod. And the people did not know that Jonathan had gone. Within the passes by which Jonathan sought to go over to the Philistines' garrison, there was a rocky crag on one side and a rocky crag on the other side. The name of the one was Bozes, and the name of the other Sine. The one crag rose on the north in front of Michmash, and the other on the south in front of Geba. Jonathan, Jonathan said to the young man who carried his armor, Come, let us go over to the garrison of these uncircumcised. It may be that the Lord will work for us. For nothing can hinder the Lord from saving by many or by few. And his armor-bearer said to him, Do all that is in your heart. Do as you wish. Behold, I am with you heart and soul. Then Jonathan said, Behold, we will cross over to the men, and we will show ourselves to them. If they say to us, Wait until we come to you, then we will stand still in our place, and we will not go up to them. But if they say, Come up to us, then we will go up. For the Lord has given them into our hand, and this shall be the sign to us. So both of them showed themselves to the garrison of the Philistines, and the Philistines said, Look, Hebrews are coming out of the holes where they have hidden themselves. And the men of the garrison hailed Jonathan and his armor-bearer and said, Come up to us, and we will show you a thing. And Jonathan said to his armor-bearer, Come up after me, for the Lord has given them into the hand of Israel. Then Jonathan climbed up on his hands and feet, and his armor-bearer after him. And they fell before Jonathan, and his armor-bearer killed them after him. And that first strike, which Jonathan and his armor-bearer made, killed about twenty men, within, as it were, half a furrow's length and an acre of land. And there was a panic in the camp, in the field, and among all the people. The garrison, and even the raiders, trembled. The earth quaked, and it became a very great panic. And the watchmen of Saul and Gibeah of Benjamin looked, and behold, the multitude was dispersing here and there. Then Saul said to the people who were with him, Count and see who has gone from us. And when they had counted, behold, Jonathan and his armor-bearer were not there. So Saul said to Ahijah, Bring the ark of God here. For the ark of God went at that time with the people of Israel. 
Now while Saul was talking to the priests, the tumult in the camp of the Philistines increased more and more. So Saul said to the priests, Withdraw your hand. Then Saul and all the people who were with him rallied and went into the battle. And behold, every Philistine sword was against his fellow, and there was great confusion. Now the Hebrews, who had been with the Philistines before that time, and who had gone up with them into the camp, even they also turned to be with the Israelites who were with Saul and Jonathan. Likewise, when all the men of Israel who had hidden themselves in the hill country of Ephraim heard that the Philistines were fleeing, they too followed hard after them in the battle. So the Lord saved Israel that day, and the battle passed beyond beth -Avon. So far the word of the Lord. Against great odds, the, or, the Lord gives Israel a victory over the Philistines through Jonathan, whose name means the Lord gave. Too often fear keeps us from venturing out for the Lord. Though we should not dare God to give us signs, we can learn from Jonathan's story to attempt great things for God and expect great things from him. Though we may fall and fail from the world's perspective, God gives us ultimate spiritual victory in all things in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. O oh, Heavenly Father, forgive us our timidity and failure to step out in faith. Inspire us through Jonathan's example to confront the forces of sin and Satan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue now, verses 24 through 46, entitled, Saul's Rash Vow. And the men of Israel had been hard-pressed that day, so Saul had laid an oath on the people, saying, Cursed be the man who eats food until it is evening, and I am avenged on my enemies. So none of the people had tasted food. Now when all the people came to the forest, behold, there was honey on the ground, and when the people entered the forest, behold, the honey was dropping, but no one put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan had not heard his father charge the people with the oath, so he put out the tip of the staff that was in his hand and dipped it in the honeycomb and put his hand to his mouth, and his eyes became bright. Then one of the people said, Your father strictly charged the people with an oath, saying, Curse be the man who eats food this day. And the people were faint. Then Jonathan said, My father has troubled the land. See how many eyes have become bright because I tasted a little of this honey. How much better if the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies that they found. For now the defeat among the Philistines has not been great. They struck down the Philistines that day from Michmash to Aljalan, and the people were very faint. The people pounced on the spoil and took sheep and oxen and calves and slaughtered them on the ground, and the people ate them with the blood. Then they told Saul, Behold, the people are sinning against the Lord by eating with the blood. And he said, You have dealt treacherously. Roll a great stro stone to me here. And Saul said, Disperse yourselves among the people and say to them, Let every man bring his ox or his sheep and slaughter them here and eat. And do not sin against the Lord by eating with the blood. So every one of the people brought his ox with him that night, and they slaughtered them there. And Saul built an altar to the Lord. It was the first altar that he built to the Lord. Then Saul said, Let us go down after the Philistines by night and plunder them until the morning light. Let us not leave a man of them. And they said, Do whatever seems good to you. But the priest said, Let us draw near to God here. And Saul inquired of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you give them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him that day. And Saul said, Come here, all you leaders of the people, and know and see how this sin has arisen today. For as the Lord lives, who saves Israel, though it be in Jonathan my son, he shall surely die. But there was not a man among all the people who answered him. Then he said to all Israel, You shall be on one side, and I and Jonathan, my son, my, and I and Jonathan, my son, will be on the other side. And the people said to Saul, Do what seems good to you. Therefore Saul said, O Lord God of Israel, why have you not answered your servant this day? If this guilt is in me or in my Jonathan, my son, O Lord God of Israel, give Urim. But if this guilt is in your people, Israel, give Thummim. And Jonathan and Saul were taken, but the people escaped. 
And Saul said, Cast the lot between me and my son Jonathan. And Jonathan was taken. Then Saul said to Jonathan, Tell me what you have done. And Jonathan told him, I tasted a little honey with the tip of the staff that was in my hand. Here I am, I will die. And Saul said, God, do so to me and more also. You shall surely, you shall surely die, Jonathan. Then the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan die who has worked this great salvation in Israel? Far from it. As the Lord lives, there shall not one hair of his head fall to the ground, for he has worked with God this day. So the people ransomed Jonathan so that he did not die. And Saul went up from pursuing the Philistines, and the Philistines went to their own place. So far the word of the Lord. Saul's foolish oath threatens Jonathan's very life, but the people rightly intervene. At times, all of us have acted rashly rather than seeking God's guidance, sometimes with long-lasting, perhaps lifelong, repercussions. Thankfully, as the Israelites ransomed Jonathan from Saul's rash oath, Christ ransomed us from our own sinful folly and grants us new opportunities. Let us pray. Almighty God, forgive us when we act rashly. Give us the wisdom to seek out your way in the pages of Holy Scripture and seek out your way in the pages of Holy Scripture alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 14 at verse 42. I'm sorry, 47. This is entitled, Saul Fights Israel's Enemies. When Saul had taken the kingship over Israel, he fought against all his enemies on every side, against Moab, against the Ammonites, against Edom, against the kings of Zobah, and against the Philistines. Wherever he turned, he routed them. And he did valiantly instruct the Amalekites and, De Amalekites and delivered Israel out of the hands of those who plundered them. Now the sons of Saul were Jonathan, Ishvi, and Melchashua. And the names of his two daughters were these. The names of the firstborn was Merab, and the name of the younger, Michael. Michael. And the name of Saul's wife was Anaham, and the daughter, the daughter of Amaz. And the name of the commander of his army was Abner, the son of Ner, Saul's uncle. Kish was the father of Saul, and Ner, the father of Abner, was the son of Ibil. There was hard fighting against the Philistines all the days of Saul. And when Saul, Saul saw any strong man or any valiant man, he attached him to himself. So far the word of the Lord. As king, Saul serves primarily as a military leader. Today, believers continue to face enemies. We face enemies both physical and spiritual. Through God's weapon in particular, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Ephesians 6, 17, God grants us victory and strength to serve him boldly. So we pray. O Lord of hosts, be with us in our daily struggle against all enemies that seek to destroy us now and eternally. Strengthen and uphold us until we pass from the church militant to the church triumphant. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We continue now in prayer on this 12th day of July. On this 12th day of July on the Pray For Us calendar, we pray for our early childhood centers that introduce young families to the saving love of Jesus. We pray that they are faithful witness to the littlest of God's children and all of their families. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the church. Deliver us from being anxious over the cares of this world, O Lord, and hear the prayers of your people, that we may know the comfort of your peace in all circumstances. O blessed Father, we have found favor in your sight, and you have accomplished all things for our salvation. Hear us on behalf of your church, that those who have been baptized into Christ may live in him and make known your love to the world, that many may be sons and daughters of Abraham and Sarah by faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
O merciful Father, you have wounded your own Son to bring us the eternal healing of your love. Bless the sick and those who suffer, those wounded in body or mind, and those dying, and all those we now name to you in our hearts. In your own time, grant to them healing according to your will, and sustain them into the day of the resurrection of the body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, O Lord, and whatever else you know we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of the mercies and by the merits of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, <clears throat> was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We are bold to pray together as he has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <clears throat>